What's happening people? We are back for another episode of pre-season vlog. Today we're going to do a pitch workout, working on a bit of speed, a wee bit of conditioning and the sun I've been kind of wanting to put up for a wee while. So, got an opportunity this week to do it, got some nice weather, so let's fucking get in there. Okay, warm up while he's going to go for a jog around the pitch here. Um, get warmed up and then I'm going to go through some just sort of mobility, some general movements, kind of similar to the one we were doing last day. So, uh, lap through around the pitch here and then we will get stuck in. Okay, let's do some moving, some mobility, finish off a warm up. First part of the warm up, just getting the kind of heart rate going, doing the wheel job to the pitch. Then getting into like a wee hamstring and lunge series, warming up the hamstrings, warming up the quads, and then I like getting those kind of dynamic swings, just really kind of opens everything up. And then I'm going to finish off the warm up now with like um, some hop and some jump variations. Good just for kind of priming you, getting ready and building that intent, but also just a nice way to finish off the warm up as well. Um, so I'm going to go pogos, three sets of uh, about 8 10 meters, and then we're going to do some uh, single leg pogos, a wee bit shorter distance, probably like maybe 5 meters, and uh, nice and bouncing between, nice and reactive on the feet. Those single leg pogos are very, very demanded on the calves. Um, I've definitely built up by doing normal pogos for a while because they're fucking sore, especially in this year 3G. But I think pogos are brilliant um, when I started implementing them last year. Brilliant for foot strength, brilliant for the calves. Makes you nice and reactive. That's what we want. So this drill here is, I don't know what you call them, they call it like a stride or a single leg stride. Basically you're just getting in your starting position for the acceleration of the sprint and just practicing one stride, so big drive off say the right leg, trying to really extend back, get the arm switch going. It's a nice drill for kind of building that intent that we want when we go into our sprints here. It's also nice because you work on a wee bit of technique with the arm switch, with driving off the leg, getting a nice extension. Um, it's more of a movement to kind of prime us and get us ready for the next block of work after this here. So what we're doing now is some bounds. Basically trying to bound off a single leg into the other leg um, for distance. So not going for height, going more for distance of practice and getting nice and long, big strong drives off the feet. Whenever I'm in those bounds, trying to stay up nice and tall in the air. And everything about floating through the air. Um, again, not a good one for just practicing the skill and a wee bit of rhythm. But great for getting that bit of intent of just driving your foot hard off the ground, which is really what sprinting is all about and accelerating. Oh, 
Okay, next up getting to some resisted sprints. Um, resisted sprints are kind of in, in a lot of research. There seems to be a good bit of research and backing that they are very good at improving your your acceleration and your speed. Um, so I'm using this here, the Exogenation, which is this in one of the last videos. If you don't have access to this, you could just use like a, a sled, you know, one that goes around the waist, you tie it back to weights. You could use bands or else you could use like a prowler. Um, this one's great because obviously you don't have to uh, set up too much. See if you don't have any access to any of those things, just normal sprinting is, is probably just as effective. But this here is really nice for a piece of equipment because you're training that same pattern, that sprinting pattern, and uh, therefore it's very specific. But also because we're loading it means you're just trying to get more force into the ground and it's a nice way to improve and work on your technique too so i actually fucking really like this i'm going four sets of uh 10 meters on this here So first set of runs, 200 meters. Well, this pitch is about say 180, up and down. Oh, I'm doing 40 seconds or just under that. And then rest double that. So the pace should be at like 70%. So we shouldn't be sprinting. It shouldn't be easy either. So this is one block of tempo runs. It's so running at a consistent tempo and speed good for the aerobic system and then now I'm going to go into 100 meters where you have 17 seconds to do it and 35 seconds rest so again double rest to work this is for some aerobic system work tempos are nice to do so it's like they're a good way of building that fitness they're not very nice so uh, uh, those are tough so 10 of them that's roughly around 100 meters Fuck. rest double the time that you work for now there's lots of ways you can build that rubric fitness like mass running and more continuous running it's just one option so no sports scientist out there shite himself and tell me why mass running is better or something. But the reason I like that is number one, it's very easy to do. It's easy to run, easy to run yourself. And secondly, you tend to be running at a higher speed. So we have a better for game specificity. Very tough. <sighs> nice wee workout. Yeah, that's a really nice wee um, session you can do just to work on some, some acceleration, some fitness. Nice to do it this time of year because it's not too demanding, but um, look, the, the simple thing is never trying to improve your sprinting. The research will show that you do things that are most specific to it, and a lot of studies are saying that the best thing to improve your sprinting, and even injury prevention, is more sprinting. So um, practice it more, basically treat it like a skill, same way you would shooting or tackling or something. Um, but yeah, that was a nice wee workout.